hey what's going on guys welcome to the second video of the series on getting started with reloadly i am junaid maksud and let's jump right into it so previously we covered a detailed introduction on how to get yourself registered on the platform and how to obtain your test and production api keys and secret and how to actually convert those keys into usable api token Finally, we used the token to make our first AP call to check the balance of our account. If you haven't done yet, I will highly suggest going back and checking the first video. Today, we are going to look at the country's endpoint. This is useful to keep your website and customer base updated with what you can support in terms of top-ups. We will also look at individual ISO endpoint in order to get details of a specific country. You can further use this in combination with the operator's endpoint to determine the operator available within a specific ISO. The end goal of today's video is to create a simple application to display a list of available supported countries and when the user clicks on a specific country the application will display complete details of that ISO. So let's quickly switch to our development environment and get right into it. I'm going to use PHP Storm with Docker set up on my Mac. You can get the same results with any development environment. I will be using PHP as the programming language. However, in the documentation, you can see that the example code is available in a bunch of other languages as well. We will be simply doing curl requests, which you can pretty much do in any programming language. So let's quickly jump into the development environment and I'll just brief you guys on how I've had it set up. Let's quickly look at the docker compose file. I've set up a simple single container for PHP. It's based on Apache configuration from the docker hub. It's going to be serving the whole repository. So this index.php is going to be the first file that's going to pop up when I open localhost. So I've already set up the structure of the website based on a simple clean bootstrap example so before we get into the structure of the website let's quickly do docker compose up to get our website up and running so once that's running we get a clean page with a simple header and hello world displayed so i've already separated head header and footer in separate files to keep things a bit organized the index.php is going to be just a boilerplate for us to copy and paste into different files. So what we want to do for today's video is simply add a country's navbar item and when the user clicks on that the application is display a complete list of all the supported countries by the platform. I've already imported the code base from previous video. So we already have the get token and get balance API calls. This repository is going to be shared in the description down below so you guys can follow along. So let's give every file a quick look before getting right into the development. So the get token file is simply making a post request to the auth slash token endpoint. We are sending client ID, secret, grant type and audience and the response is basically the API token that we will be using in every other endpoint. The get balance one is simply a get call to the account slash balance API endpoint and the token that we're getting from the get token API, we are simply passing that as bearer authorization token to get the response here. Let's get started with adding the countries page to our application. We'll head into the header file and simply create a new nav item. Call it countries. Take it to the countries.php file. Let's check if everything's working fine. So we have this countries endpoint and when we click on it, it gives us an error because this file does not exist. Let's simply copy the index file and name it countries.php. Let's just write this is countries to check if everything's working fine. Good, so that's working. Now let's include the get token file. What this file actually does is create a post request to the auth token endpoint and gives us the response in token response variable, which we can basically use anywhere in this application. Let's copy this curl request and 
head back to the documentation. In order to get all the countries, we have to make a get request to the countries endpoint. Let's simply switch the endpoint here and we already have given it the token. So countries response. So now that we have a list of all the countries in this variable, we'll simply going to loop through it. Let's create a simple structure for our loop. So I'm going to show three countries in one line. That's why I'm using call for. So there we go, we have a complete list of all the countries. Let's quickly go through the code. So what I've actually done is from the response, you can see the documentation that the response, we get an array of all the countries. Every country has its ISO name, name, country code, currency name, currency symbol, flag, and a calling code. So we've, what I've done is simply shown the country's flag and the ISO name and currency name. So these are all the countries that are supported by the platform and their appropriate currency name. So what we want to do is create a click event for the name of the currency and when the user clicks on that currency we're gonna create a new page and display all the information on that ISO. So let's simply switch this to the anchor tag and create the reference to a new file. We will simply pass in the ISO as a get parameter. So let's just refresh and see everything is working just fine or not. Great, so we've changed the div to an anchor tag and if you click on the country obviously we are missing this file. So let's just go back and create a copy of our country's file and call it country.php. So before we make changes to this file let's quickly look at the countries by ISO endpoint. So we simply need to append the ISO with the country's endpoint. So simply slash. So let's just get the ISO from the get parameter that we're sending. Now that that's done, let's simply switch this endpoint. Now instead of an area, we're simply going to get the information about the country. So let's switch the name that. So this should give me one country. Great. So now let's look at what information is available for that country. So we have the ISO name, name, the code currency name, symbol, flag, and calling code. We're gonna show all this information right here. So let's just add that quickly. So what I'm going to change is instead of the flag URL, I'm gonna show the actual flag here. Let's just create an image tag. And for calling code, we're gonna display all calling codes as a comma separated list. So let's give that a look.
Let's just get rid of the comma. We're simply going to add two spaces instead of the comma. Great. So we have all the details for that ISO. Let's check a different country and see everything else is working or not. Great. So it's working just fine for all the countries. Now that we have covered the basic endpoints and made successful call to the live platform, the country's endpoint in your project will be used alongside the operator's endpoint, which is exactly what we are going to look into in the next video. The end goal of the series is to get yourself fully qualified to developing a complete application based off Reloadly platform. The complete code base of this project is going to be on our official GitHub repository, publicly available for everyone. I'm going to leave the link to that repository in the description down below. Don't forget to like this video if it helped you move forward. Let us know in the comments below on what aspects you want us to cover next. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and stay tuned. I will see you in the next video where we will be talking about the operator. So stay tuned.